everyone. Thanks for joining us for today's meetup. On today's agenda, Scott and Chris will be providing an overview of public access application for assessments and tax organization. As a reminder, we'll be recording and posting this meetup on meetups.com shortly after the presentation. With that said, I'll go ahead and pass it over to Scott. Thanks, Heather, and thanks everyone for joining us today. Uh, today, Chris and I would like to talk about the work we've been doing to improve public access in land records or tax and assessment organizations. Um, and I just have a few slides to set a bit of context, and then I'm gonna turn it over to Chris, who's really gonna spend the bulk of the time today showing you guys solutions that are available for you uh, to take advantage of immediately in your organization. So if you think about today's land records or uh, business requirements and the kind of pressures that we're seeing on assessment and tax organizations, um, what you'll note is that historically GIS has been used pretty extensively in these organizations, um, but, but really it's been limited to just visualizing and kind of maintaining the assessment role um, and kind of a, a description of those tax parcel uh, parcel tax parcels on your assessment role. Um, but what we've seen is that really the demands, while land records organizations have historically, you know, been very active in the public uh, access space and been, you know, one of the most fundamental uh, missions is to actually provide access to the assessment role and uh, the property information. What we've seen is really the pressures and the business requirements for those public access applications really change. And those changes have quite honestly come from factors outside our organization and other organizations who are providing property information to the same, same constituents you serve. So a lot of the work we've been doing over the past several years is really helping uh, local government organizations improve the overall public access experience and expand that beyond what traditionally has been uh, just public information. So if you think about kind of three phases or a continuum of citizen engagement what we'll talk about today is a whole suite of applications that what we may call, might call simple show me applications that provide authoritative information to citizens or the general public in your community or maybe other real focused uh, business units in your community. And that's really about kind of taking that authoritative information and making it available in a simple and easy to use fashion across devices and through a variety of exper focused experiences. But many organizations are starting to move to um, the, the concept of citizens as a sensor, where they're actually submitting structured feedback and using that feedback to drive work activities within the assessor's office or maybe the treasurer's office as well, too. And finally, there's a continuum, the final kind of phase of this continuum is where you're actually enlisting citizens in your community uh, to volunteer in the participation of that. And, and you may see um, you know, kind of continuous dialogue with citizens as you're enlisting them in that feedback. And we're not going to spend a whole lot of um, time on that today, but you do see kind of the, the applications like that around the periphery of land records and for maybe information, maybe in uh, applications like Adopt a Park, for example, um, as examples of that. And so today we're really going to focus on um, a whole suite of citizen engagement or constituent engagement land records, maps, and apps. And Chris is going to take you through several different solution offerings that are available today. Um, but I, before he does that, I do want to point out, right, that this is part of a larger land records offering for assessment and tax organizations. And they're solutions that help you visualize value changes that are occurring in your community and even understand the property conditions within those neighborhoods that are driving those value changes. You know, we know that government organizations still right, have that fundamental need to maintain the assessment role, right? That is the revenue source for uh, or at least the primary revenue source for cities and counties across the country. And so leveraging GIS to efficiently get tax parcel information onto the assessment role in a simple and straightforward way is critical to that. And then ultimately, there are many times where you share that property information with others, um, either regional COGS or even state agencies. And so we have some solutions that really help you leverage that authoritative data and share it with other stakeholders. So that really is the context for the demonstrations that we're going to show you today and the solutions that are available for you in your assessment or treasurer's office. So with that, let me just turn it over to Chris, who's really going to take it over from here and show you the solutions that are available for public engagement and public access. Okay. Thanks, Scott. All right. So uh, to start our kind of whirlwind tour of land records public access apps, I'm going to start just at our general land records page. And Scott was mentioning uh, what we're going to show today is just kind of a portion of our entire land records offering. So if you go to the main page here, you see solutions uh, for maintaining your tax parcel inventory. So we have some desktop editing tools for that. 
um, how you can actually inventory street level photos and then use those to crowdsource a property survey um, out. We also have uh, areas that you can visualize property value within your community. Those are more internal, internal facing applications to help you understand value. Um, and even things like recovering tax revenue. So straddling both um, the assessment office, but also the treasurer's office. How can we um, get some uh, tax revenue back from properties that might be, might be delinquent and things like that. And then getting into uh, engaging citizens, which we'll talk about today, and even notifying property owners. So how do I um, notify adjoining property owners of changes that might be happening within the community? Um, and, I'll, and I'll show that as well. So first thing we're gonna do is jump out to our tax parcel viewer. So this is actually a new application that we've recently released. Um, and it's what we're calling version two of our original tax parcel viewer. And it's a, it can be a fully hosted application. So what you're seeing here are tax parcels, obviously, uh, simplified unified search, and a very focused pop-up that's giving you uh, detailed property information. And this is really focused around the citizen uh, needing to get information about their parcel or even a potential parcel that they're interested in. Um, so this would be really a citizen focused one. And I'm, I'm gonna talk a little bit later about what we're doing here to enhance this even further uh, to support operations within the assessment organization. So maybe a more detailed view of this and even another version maybe for real estate professionals, but this is really focused in on the citizen. So what you're seeing here is a very focused pop-up. Like I mentioned, uh, we have links out to the property photograph. If I click on the parcel number as an example, so this is kind of reaching into um, any photographs that you might have uh, about that parcel or property. Um, if I go back to the, sorry, back to the, I've uh, got a bunch of tabs open here. Uh, go back to the tax parcel viewer. We also have a more information link and that's really designed to link you to um, other business systems that contain uh, additional property info. So that could be the tax system, could be the um, maybe reaching into the CAMA information for value and things like that. This is really designed to kind of link out to um, your authoritative content stored in other business systems. It also has a really interesting way to submit feedback. So if you're a citizen and you see something wrong with your parcel or maybe a property or you've maybe recently even subdivided a property and you want to um, ensure that that transaction has been recorded properly and, and received by the assessment office and if you don't see it on the map you can actually submit feedback so I can go in here and draw an area of interest fill out a simple form that talks about the problem that you want to submit in this case we're just going to say that um, there's a problem with the geometry you know I submitted a, a split And then you can just give some more information about um, your name, phone number, contact info, if you wanna be contacted back about that and then simply submit that information. Uh, you also notice that that submission is, it disappeared from the map because it's hidden from um, others to view and uh, you can get feedback or give feedback that way to the assessment office. Also, you can print, uh, simple printing here and then you can even change the base map if you wanna see an aerial photography view. Um, and like I mentioned, this is a fully hosted app and I'll be talking more about the deployment mechanism in a bit, but this is also simply deployed with our kind of one click approach using our deployment tools in ArcGIS Pro. Uh, so we'll talk more about that as well. All right, moving on. Uh, this next application I wanna talk about is called a resi residential comp finder. And this is also designed to be a public access application. And what it's, what it's really designed to do is help you understand sales that are happening around a particular area or around you. So what I can do is search for an address, and once my address is found, it'll automatically create a buffer around that particular address and then show me all the sales within a certain distance. In this case, it's one mile, but I can expand that to go further. Um, and in many cases, you might want to even do this internally. So you might want to find out more about sales that are happening within a, you know, a certain distance of a property to do a more uh, detailed comp analysis. Uh, but then in this case, it could be a citizen that just wants to understand what's happening around them in terms of sales and then make maybe a real estate decision based on what they're seeing around them. And I can go in further and I can say I'm looking for maybe uh, structures on parcels that are between 1,500 and 2,600 square feet and further filter the resulting list. In that case, there was nothing found. Let's uh, bump this up here a little bit. Get a little further out.
exit the filter out real quick. Let's try this again. Yeah, looks like there's no results found with that mm -hmm. <laughs> criteria. It's okay. But you kind of get the idea. So these are all configurable filters on your authoritative uh, sales information to help you filter, understand um, more info about sales. Let's try the uh, let's try a sale price here. I'll do that one. Let's go sale price between maybe two hundred fifty thousand and just do something big here, five hundred thousand and filter. There we go. So that kind of gives you the. the uh, an example of a filter you might want to apply. Uh, review the resulting properties here in a nice list. And if I click on those, what we're even doing is bringing in our geo enrichment content and showing you more information about that particular neighborhood that that parcel resides within. So again, very focused application on finding sales, but also getting more info about the neighborhood and even go a step further and get information about the community that maybe that parcel's within. So in this case, Naperville, and get some rich kind of um, geo-enrichment content from that. So population, you can get information about total households within that area, uh, the household income, et cetera. So that's the comp finder. Okay, moving on. Uh, one, one of the common questions that, that people have when they look for a parcel or want to know more information about a parcel is if they're in a flood zone or not. And this is a very simple application called floodplain inquiry that helps you identify a parcel. So in this case, I'll just click on the map, but I can also search and it's telling me, it's basically overlaying the flood zone information and telling me what flood zone that parcel might intersect and then linking me to the authoritative content from FEMA so I can make a decision about um, uh, you know, that parcel. So this will give you the actual DFIRM panel information, which is more detailed, um, and then link you off to it. So that's floodplain inquiry. The nice thing about this app too is that it doesn't really require a lot of uh, data processing. This is really just the parcel layer and the flood zone layer um, in a map shared with an application. So there's no pre-processing of the content that I have to do to, you know, burn or copy the flood zone information out of the parcels. It's doing that intersect kind of on the fly. So that's that's nice to nice to do there. Um, the next app I want to show and briefly talk about is a school locator. So many times when you're looking to purchase a property or a parcel, um, you want to know what uh, school district your your child might go to. So what I can do here is uh, click on the click on a location or search um, and find out really detailed and nice information about the school district that um, that particular location is in, um, and then get even more information about that school district. So in this case, your 770 students that are enrolled in that elementary school, um, and it's highlighting it for you on the map, and it's telling you what the attendance zone boundary is. I can also get directions to the school um, by clicking on the directions tab, and it'll give me some detailed info about how to get there. So that's school locator. Is there any questions at this point? Going too fast? Heather, are there any questions in the chat? Uh, nope, no questions right now. Okay. All right, one of the applications that I mentioned uh, was public notification earlier. So I want to kind of give you a detailed view of what that application does. Um, and this would be really something that you want to stand up inside your organization to notify property owners and create a nice, simple mailing list. So in this case, I've highlighted a parcel on the map. Um, I can click on it and get more info about it. I can also click on the notification button. And in this case, I want to notify any adjoining property owners within a certain distance. So I've typed in 100 feet. And I want to actually create a nice mailing formatted, pre-formatted mailing label in the Avery format. And I can choose a couple different types here and click download. And it's going to buffer that particular parcel and then create a nice mailing list. So there you go. There's an Avery format. So I can just print these right off to um, some mail, uh, Avery sheets. I can also select things like school districts and notify everybody within that school district. Um, so if I go to the search here, and just type in school. Should find a school. So again, this is kind of a unified search. It's searching parcels, but it's also searching any other overlay layer that I have in the map. So in this case, the school district. And I could go further and say, I want to notify everybody within that school district. So it has that capability as well. Um, one more thing I'll add is if you do have um, uh, if you want to notify everybody along a road, 
uh, if you search and find a road, it'll actually buffer that road and then notify everybody um, adjacent to it. So that's a public notification. Hey, Chris, there's yep. been a couple questions that have come in, and maybe we could take a minute sure. to answer some of them. So one, Jeff asked, um, are these app templates in ArcGIS Online, or you know, what's the technology driving the suite of apps you showed? And maybe you could just back up for a minute and just drill into the, you showed four or five apps. Um, and maybe sure. describe a little bit the technology that's being used and how people find out more about that. Yeah, it's a good question. So I'll start back at the tax parcel viewer. Um, and I mentioned this is a could be a fully hosted application. So what I have in the map is, or what, what you're seeing is a web map that contains the tax parcel layer. And those are fully hosted in ArcGIS Online. Um, but they can also come from your on-premises services that you have. Uh, and the application that you're seeing is also a fully hosted a web application um, and it uses a couple of widgets in Web App Builder. So nothing, uh, in, nothing custom here, nothing you have to really go and download. You can configure this all within your organization online. Um, residential Comp Finder is a little different. So this requires you to actually download the application and deploy it on premises. And um, it has some kind of advanced capabilities built into the app, and that's part of the reason why that it's an on-premises app. But we're also looking at ways to migrate these to more uh, fully hosted versions, but in this case, for the comp finder, this is a uh, on-premises deployment. So you download the application, you stand up a set of services that we provide baselines for, and then you can deploy that within uh, your organization out to uh, citizens. Floodplain Inquiry, this is a fully hosted application. So this, again, can be um, solely be driven by online services, or you can use your own, but the application is just a configuration of ArcGIS Online. And we use an, uh, an application called Information Lookup for that. And same thing with School Locator. And what we can do uh, when I get into the deployment mechanism or, or, or workflow, I can talk more about how to simply deploy these without really doing much. Um, and it's really a one-click deployment um, besides loading some data. And, and I'll show that workflow as well. So there's kind of a mixture um, of, of what we've been showing. We've been showing some fully hosted apps. We've been showing some that require um, on-premise deployments, which in the case of the comp finder and land use public notification or, or public notification, those require you to do, do some work to download the app and then stand them up. And, and we have the, everything's documented as well. Yeah, we're fully documented there. So if you have any questions about that, I'll show you where you can get more detailed help. There was one um, other detailed question. John asked, what when you showed the floodplain inquiry right. and you showed how you could link out the FEMA's official defer maps, do we have an error message or how is that kind of working and what happens maybe if a DFIRM panel isn't available for that location? Um, so the way the application is configured uh, currently is we link this, the try live application will actually link you out to the FIRMET um, okay. viewer. So that will give you uh, the location of the DFIRM panel and it'll let you basically print off a copy of that. But you can also just link off to their FEMA's default search, which allows you to type in the community or if you have the DFIRM panel, you can type that in. Um, depending on where you are, uh, sometimes we found that the FEMA services could be on different servers at FEMA. So you have to kind of take a look at uh, where you're living um, and then uh, use the default search to find out what the URL is and then modify it in the pop-up. But it's all configurable. Okay. Good. That's yep. a couple of questions we have. Okay. All right, so public notification, we covered that. Um, and I just wanted to quickly mention, uh, related to the question that we got, this is one of those on-premise uh, applications that you have to download and configure on your own web app server. This is something we're actually looking at upgrading as well. So um, I will talk about that in the road ahead session, but we're looking at ways to make this even a fully hosted app. Um, so we'll talk about that as well. But right now, the application, uh, you have to download it and then configure it. Okay, uh, moving on, I, I wanted to quickly talk about uh, a new application. This is fairly new, uh, called Assessment Appeal. And this really is not designed to uh, replace the Assessment Appeal process, but it's meant to supplement it. So this application allows you to initiate um, a property assessment appeal. And it's very simple. It's just a form uh, that you fill out, you give your property information, your property owner information, content, how you wanna be contacted, um, et cetera. Um, email email information if you if you want to share that why you why you're appealing your property value so it gives you a nice little drop down of reasons why you might want to appeal um, any additional comments and then select a point 
or location on the map and then submit it. And this will really kind of trigger a process that you have to do within the assessment office to um, do the proper analysis and, and contact the property owner and maybe even fill out additional paperwork to get that appeal through the process. But this is a really good way of kind of starting that, that process of uh, property appeal. And you might want to only have this open during the appeal process, of course. So this is an application you might want to turn on within your organization when you publish it um, and then turn it off after the after the uh, the open appeal process is over. And we've actually seen a couple examples of this application. So um, one of them is from Douglas County and they've taken our default app and they've configured it to have uh, really detailed information about how their process works. So this is a version of the app that Douglas County configured. It's similar, but um, they've, they've kind of taken their own requirements and, and added to the existing app. So there's a kind of a nice example of um, how somebody's taken one of our uh, solutions and then extended it for their own for their own use. And that's common with many of our solutions that we offer. Um, you know, we give you a very good baseline, but you can always extend it further if you'd like. Um, and that could be as simple as adding the fields that you want to add to those solutions to present them in the way that you want to present them. And we'll talk more about that as well in the deployment. So um, any questions there before I jump into ArcGIS Pro and desktop and, and do a, a, a demonstration? Uh, there was, uh, there is one question from John. Uh, does the printing options in Tax Parcel Viewer support secured services? For example, aerial imagery that might be subject to license agreement and not consumed through the REST endpoint, but displaying them publicly facing application is desirable. So um, maybe I can, um, so the, the tax parcel viewer is designed for citizens. So whatever content that you wanna put into that application would have to be public. Um, if you wanted to disable printing of that aerial photo, um, I'm not sure exactly how you would handle it. Um, I would suggest using it. It's using a print task, right, that you yeah. author from your organization, so. Yeah, I don't know if there's a way. So it's, it's basically going to, the way we have it configured right now, that print's going to work based on what you're seeing displayed on the map. Right. So there's no way of saying, you know, exclude or configuring to exclude certain layers that exist within the map. Um, but we can think about that. Maybe, is there any... Maybe John can provide some more. Yeah, details. maybe there's some more detail we can dig into there. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say too. You know, we are thinking about ways, like I mentioned, to have a, a slightly different version of the tax parcel viewer for different uses as well. So if you have, you know, internal layers that you don't want to share externally, um, this application can be secured within your organization for only. Um, folks that, that, that can have access to that content. So if you have, you know, other info that you want to display in here, you can do that and then secure it that way. Um, but this is really designed, again, for the citizen. And we do have, by default, um, two different types of base maps that you can turn on and off. One of them is the imagery and one of them is the topographic base map. And we're just using the standard services as, as we provide. Um, and you can add in whatever services you'd like into this. So if you have any more uh, detailed info on that, we can follow up. Okay, sure. Um, that's it for right now. Okay. Okay, so uh, one of the things I wanted to touch on uh, were, was the deployment of some of those solutions. And um, I don't know if a lot of folks have had a chance to take a look at our new deployment tool uh, that works inside of ArcGIS Pro, uh, but I wanted to talk about it briefly here. Um, so one of the things you can do once you install the add-in, so the ArcGIS deployment tool is an add-in, uh, ArcGIS solution deployment tool is an add-in, um, is filter by um, not necessarily department, but functional area within local government. So what I can do is actually dig into um, local gov here. And in this case, I can view all of the solutions that we provide within local gov. And I can even look at some of those ones that I mentioned uh, for land records specifically, including an application called tax sale. So uh, in San Bernardino County, actually next month is the official tax sale. So it's kind of a good timing for this application, at least here in California. 
And this allows you to market properties that have gone delinquent and um, are reverted to the point where they're available for tax sale. Uh, and this is a really simple app, much like the tax parcel viewer, that gives you very detailed information about those um, tax sale properties and how you can acquire them. So what I can do is simply click on that application on the list and click deploy. And what it's actually gonna do is create that application for me. So it's gonna create the tax sale app. It's gonna also spin up any empty services that the application requires and a map that can be used um, uh, for the app. So it's doing that all in one click. Um, and once I get it, the next step will be to actually load data into it and we'll go through that process. So as that's running, I'm gonna switch over to my table of contents. And one of the things we get a lot of requests for is, well, I don't really um, have spatial data for all the sales, but I do have a, a table. Um, and this is coming from just the uh, tax receivables database and export it out. So what I have here is, if I go back to my project pane, project folder, you can see here that I have just an Excel document with a table, and that table contains all the properties that are available for tax sale. And if I take a look at the properties of that information, you'll see that I have a bunch of property characteristics, some information about um, the outstanding taxes that are due, the fees that are due, but they're not, it's not, it's not spatial, um, but we do have address information in here. So the first thing I'll do is I'll go to my analysis tab and I'll find the geocode address tool. And what I'm gonna do is just feed that table directly in there. And I want to use our standard Esri World geocoder. Wait for it. Hmm. <laughs> okay. And um, I have multiple field, fields that I can feed into the geocoder. So I'm going to use my site address field as my primary here. I'm going to specify the city, which I have in a field for city. City, do state. I'll do postal code. And I'll go ahead and run that geocoding tool. So this is all this is going to do is really take the data out of that flat table and then create points on the map. And those will all be used for my tax um, sale properties. So this is a pattern you can apply to other solutions as well. So this is really just taking tabular content, creating points, and then publishing those. And I'll get through that process here in a second. Let that run. Go back to our task. You'll notice that the tax sale application has been deployed. So there's a green checkbox next to it. So it's, it's now in my organization. So that's good. So we'll go and discover that information here and show it to you here in a second. And our geocoding has been successfully completed. And close out of here. Close my table. And you can see some points on the map. So if I click on one of those points, it's taken that um, tabular information, created points for each individual tax sale property. So I got that ready to go. But now I need to actually load that into my tax sale application. So I'm going to click over to my portal tab. And I'll notice that if I go to my tax sale folder, that it has deployed a web map for me and a service that's provided with the um, application that I can use to load these tax sale properties into called tax reverted property. So I'll double click on that and I'll add that feature service to the feature layer to the map. I'll go back to my table of contents. So now I have my geocoded points and it'll be adding in my service here in a second. There they are. There's the service that I'm gonna to use to populate um, some sales. 
I'll go to my tasks. Um, uh, the back to the deployment tools here. And what I'm going to do is actually configure or, and load data. So if I had to add any additional fields to the solution that we provide, I can do that through the configure uh, task, but I can also load data. And what I want to do is input um, my uh, new points that I just geocoded, and then my target data set will be that service that was provided by the solution. And what I can do here is field map. So if I have to map over any content to uh, from source to target, I can do that. Um, so I can show you that here. I can go to my site address and add a new source, which is gonna be coming from my user supplied address and add it. So you kind of get the idea there. You can do some field mapping and I can run that tool and it'll actually load data from my geocoded addresses directly into that tax reverted properties feature service layer. And if I go to my tax cell map, this is the end result. So what you end up with are those geocoded points and those geocoded points have been mapped over to the layer that was provided by the deployment tool. And you can see that we've simply deployed a tax application without many steps at all. So it's deployed the application, the web map that supports it, as well as the service that supports that web map, all in one step. And just loading data would be the last step to do. So that's kind of a sneak preview at the deployment tools and how they work. Um, and you'll also notice that if you go to um, the list of solutions again, you'll see tax parcel viewer there. You'll see other uh, solutions related to uh, land records as well. So you're going to start seeing more and more as, uh, in this uh, list of offerings as well for land records. Any questions on that? Uh, no, there's so no Chris, question. Uh, oh, Heather, maybe so just to uh, kind of provide a little more context. Right? So what Chris showed was you can you could start at the the solution site and use the Try It Live applications we have of the kind of sell the concept of a tax sale map, let's say, right, and how you can kind of take what historically might be a list in the back of the paper or a PDF document on the treasurer's website, um, and then take that data, turn it into GIS information, right, and from that source, quickly deploy the tax sale application with the ArcGIS Solutions deployment tool and then load your content into it. Um, and so that's a pattern that you can use for almost all of the solutions Chris showed you today, whether it's the tax parcel viewer, which requires, you know, just simple property information and assessment characteristics, the floodplain inquiry, school locator, and all of those solutions that are delivered that way. So it is a really quick and simple way for you guys to take advantage of the solutions Chris showed you today and quickly deploy them in your organization with your content. Yeah, and the process would be very much the same. Right. So you would, for tax parcel viewer, instead of geocoding a bunch of points, you would bring in your authoritative parcel data and then load that into the service that we provide. So a very similar pattern for, for deploying those um, solution offerings. Okay, so um, I, you know, I, I mentioned the Comp Finder, I mentioned some other solutions that, uh, you, you know, that, we, that we have that you can take advantage of right now. There's also a bunch of examples out there right now, and I wanna call out Racine County. They have a few, they've deployed many of our solutions. Uh, one of them more recently being the, the Comp Finder, and they took their own set of filters or parameters and they, deployed the solution in their own way. So you can go take a look at that. They also have a really nice um, landing page. So if you look at their landing page, they have all of their land information or land uh, record solutions all in one place. Um, and you can click through those. Uh, we also have, you know, for, for parcel maintenance I mentioned earlier, there's other solutions that we, that we have in the land record space. One of those um, solutions is our tax parcel editing uh, solution inside a desktop. That would be more of an internal facing application, but there's also a companion app called Parcel Drafter. And in Ohio, in Stark County, we've actually seen that deployed for title companies and other professionals like surveyors within the community to check uh, meets and bounds descriptions before they submit them. So you can actually even see uh, applications like Parcel Drafter, which is really a parcel editing tool, um, uh, you know, available to the general public as well. So there's some examples here. Uh, we also have a, a road ahead of new offerings that we're working on, one of them being a offering for uh, understanding your property taxes and where they're going. So a, an application called My Tax Distribution. I'll, I'll show a quick preview of that. Uh, we're working on enhancements to our parcel draft 
transfer. Like I mentioned, we didn't get into that in detail today. Um, but our partial draft application, we're making uh, enhancements to, and that'll be also a fully hosted application at uh, around the June timeframe. Uh, I mentioned public notification and the updates we're making there. So we're hoping to take the public notification app that I showed and move that to a fully hosted version uh, in 2017. And then I mentioned those new tax parcel configurations. So tax parcel viewer configurations, not only for citizens, but maybe you want to have a different version of that application for internal use that has additional layers uh, and more content that you can use to make a more equitable uh, valuation. Um, or even one that's really focused on real estate agents. So maybe real estate agents want to see different information in that public facing tax parcel viewer. So we're looking at additional configurations for that. And another big project that we're working on is really around blight remediation, which obviously affects property value. We're working with a series of cities and counties on that, which really helps you identify areas that, um, that are blighted, but also understanding where neighborhoods are kind of tipping. Um, and, and, you know, really kind of come, trying to figure out where um, blighted areas um, are happening, but also where they're going. And, and that's kind of this early warning concept. Um, so we're doing some work there as well. Let me just do a quick uh, preview of our tax distribution solution. So this is a, just an early um, cut of the tax, the tax distribution solution that I mentioned. So this is really about understanding where your property taxes are going. So in this case, I have a really nice focus pop-up with a nice chart uh, describing all of the um, taxing districts and, and where uh, certain taxes or property taxes are going. So you're seeing here the grade school and I'll, and I'll list it out as well, um, uh, you know, by type and then the total tax that's actually um, due on that property or what the total tax bill would be uh, for the year. So again, a very simple application. This would be a public facing app um, for really understanding your property taxes and where they're going. So Chris, maybe describe kind of how that application complements the tax parcel viewer and how it's slightly different, I guess. Yeah, so it, it's using really the same content, your, your tax parcel layer. In this case, it's got a related table to uh, the tax, um, that tax uh, um, breakdown. So. Again, the, the concept for loading data would be very similar. You'd be loading data potentially from the export from the tax system, uh, loading that into that related table and then being exposed here in a pop-up. This can actually act to supplement the pop-up that you saw in the tax parcel viewer. So this could maybe be a different page um, in that tax parcel view, or it could be a standalone application that just shows you more information about um, that particular property. So we're thinking about ways of either integrating it with the, the tax parcel viewer if you choose to do that, or this even could be a standalone application um, that just focuses really on that tax distribution. Um, so I think that kind of answers hopefully answers the question. Yeah, because if you look at the tax parcel viewer now, it's really focused on the value of that right. property. Maybe has some kind of total taxes collected, but this would really give citizens a breakdown of where those taxes are going yep. for each capture area in the community. Yeah, totally. So it could yeah. be part of that, or it right. could be you know something standalone as well. Yep. And we've actually worked with a few counties on this application specifically because I really wanted to focus on the data and making that really easy to stand this application up versus just giving somebody an empty box and say, you know, put your data into it. Right. This is this design really came from a, a, a bunch of different data sets that we looked at um, coming out of tax um, tax systems. So trying to make kind of both sides of it easy. Number one, getting getting it set up, but also a very simple application for citizens to use. And that's just a sneak preview of tax distribution. That's coming, should be coming around the June timeframe. Uh, I guess this would be a good time to take some questions if there if there's any. Uh, yeah, Jennifer had uh, two questions. One is after we download the apps from the resource center, do we have to access or do we have access to the Elgym or do we need to select ones we want? I'm guessing um, anybody? Yeah, I mean, uh, Scott, you want to take this one? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so Chris showed you a couple different applica applications. They can be deployed. Some of those have to require or require that technology be deployed from the solution site. The public notification application and the comp finder. But it can, but it can also be. You can also take your own data. Correct. And then you know just modify yep. the configuration for those. Right. Exactly. So. 
when you download those solutions, you know, you will get a geodatabase that helps you organize your content. Um, but many of the other solutions that are now available in the deployment tool don't require that LGM, that large LGM data model or local government information model. And all they require are a set of real focused layers that include that content. The school locator is a really good example of that. That uh, application really requires two layers, a school district layer and a school um, facility layer, essentially, that shows the location of the schools. And you don't need to stand up any other content but those two layers to really get started in that application. And so when you use the solutions deployment tool to stand that application up, It'll create that application. It'll create the uh, web map that's required for that application with all the pop-up configurations for the layers. And it'll stand up an empty feature layer in your ArcGIS Online organization or your ArcGIS Enterprise slash portal for ArcGIS implementation um, that you can then load your school information into. Um, yeah, and that, that, that's kind of the pattern I was trying to show mm -hmm. with the, um, you know, with the uh, tax application. Right. So we gave you an empty service. Yep. You basically map your content over to it, regardless of what format. That exactly right. Yep. Matter. Yep. And so we'll definitely help you structure your data to drive the requirements of that application, because that's important for the end users of those apps. But the, the, you really don't have to have this single container of data anymore that we historically called the local government information model. Um, you, you have much more flexible deployment options now with ArcGIS Online and your ArcGIS Enterprise and many of the hosted applications that are available. Another question that she had was, do the apps link to CAMA data without uh, having to be joined? Yeah, so uh, I mentioned our uh, tax parcel editing solutions that work inside a desktop. We also supply a what we call a parcel publication script that's included with that, that basically assembles your tax parcel data, which is really just geometries and parcel numbers, with your authoritative CAMA information. So there's kind of a pre-process, an ETL process, um, transforming and loading process to do that. Um, and that's how a lot of these applications work. Um, however, you could just join your CAMA data to your authoritative tax parcel data and then publish that as a service. So that's definitely something you can do. Um, we're really showing this ETL pattern um, to filter and make sure that you got the right fields coming from CAMA presented in the right way for the service and the applications to use. Um, so that's kind of the pattern that we that we. And you also showed a pattern in the text parcel viewer, Chris, how you could show those essential parcel characteristics, but then also link out to a richer maybe property record card yep. that your assessment and tax system has as well too, if you want more detailed information about that property. So, yeah, and previous to that, we had we had a reporting tool in front right. of the tax parcel viewer that basically created a PDF output. Mm -hmm. um, and what we found was most most of our clients or people that have stood up tax parcel viewers have just linked out to those systems. Right. So we didn't want to really put a lot of that functionality into the application um, and really let you link out to it. Andre has a question. When it comes to extending web apps, what training do, would you recommend? Well, there's, I mean, what Chris showed today was kind of a couple different apps. We showed web app build or configuration of web app builder um, and some widgets that we've developed for a real focused configuration of that and a theme that we use called the plateau theme. Um, so if you kind of became conversant in the web app builder framework and how, how to author and configure a web app builder configuration, that would help. And there's a lot of online documentation for that. Um, and it is a pretty straightforward process for that. So that's one kind of set of training you could use. And then you could also, um, you know, the other ones we showed were web app templates, which really are very simple to configure. Um, and there's just a configuration panel that's exposed in each of those applications if you own that item. And there's documentation for those as well online. The rest of the apps, the on-premise apps, um, like public notification and Comfinder, Com uh, the, the documentation for configuring and extending those and deploying them around the solution site. And so if you follow that documentation, we'll help you kind of take the content that's provided in the download deploy it on your web servers, author the content, author the maps, deploy it on your web servers. And then ultimately, if you do want to extend them further, there's documentation for that as well, too. Um, so there's there's a couple of different pieces of technology that are being used there and some a variety of probably of online training opportunities for you to do that. Yeah, and I guess one recommendation that I have is take a look at the existing apps that we offer. Yeah. 
see what's there before you choose to go and customize and just see what you can do with the existing apps and the configurations. Yeah, that's a really good point. Yep. Um, cause a lot of times it's a good start. Yep. It might even have something that you didn't notice that I demoed, I, I, you know, as well that you mm -hmm. can take advantage of. Um, so definitely look at the documentation, definitely look at the application and what it can offer and then the configurations that we have. Yep. Okay. Yeah. He was really focusing on kind of the custom, custom stuff. So I think you answered his question. So, uh, and Dan has a question. Is there a way to sync the deploy and our, the deploy an ArcGIS solution list with any applications already published on your portal. Current the, currently, there's no green check next to the tax parcel viewer in Pro, but we have a tax parcel viewer app set up. So that probably is a result, I, I guess, well, a couple things that come to mind there is if you deployed what I'll just call the black label version of the tax parcel viewer, um, that definitely will not show up because the previous version of the um, of the tax parcel viewer and it's not even using the same technology. Um, Chris did a complete refresh on that earlier this year. If you deployed the new tax parcel viewer prior to the deployment tool, which was possible, right, Chris, with some manual steps, um, well, that is a technically is also a different version of the tax parcel viewer and it will not show up with the green check mark next to your um in your deployment tool saying that though if you were to use the deployment tool to deploy um anything from here forward it would op absolutely kind of understand what technology has been deployed and tell you not only that you have deployed it but if there's an update as well too if we happen to ship an update so we just just unfortunately in that specific instance, you kind of got out in front of us a bit with the deployment tool and um, and that's why it's not showing up as a green check mark. In that yeah, case. yeah, the manual steps is what, what they use to, to deploy yep. their app. Yep. Which is, I mean, you can still, um, you can still load data into that, yep. into that solution and, and do that kind of work, right? Yeah. Because um, really that just takes a service, the load data uh, task. Yeah. Yep. So you still could, up, you know, update the content to yeah. that service and that kind of thing. But yeah, one thing you could do, I guess, to swizzle it so you do know when updates are coming in the future is essentially deploy the current tax parcel viewer, depending, I guess, if you've made some configurations, how much work this would might be. But deploy the current tax parcel viewer in the deployment tool, wire the web map up to your layer, your parcel layer, which should be the same if you use the manual deployment steps. And then here to forward, you would know when updates were coming for that tax parcel viewer. So there's, if you, if you did want to kind of use that tool as a way to stay current um, and understand the changes that are coming, that would be one way to do it. Okay, uh, that's all the questions for now. I'll go ahead and wrap up. Thanks for joining us for today's meetup. We look forward to seeing and hearing from you at our next meetup, which will be Thursday, May 25th which will be providing an overview of capital project planning maps and apps. So until then, everyone have a great afternoon.